His website, Is Anyone Up, allowed people to send in embarrassing nudes of their exes along with their full names and social media profiles. Some say making money off of that sort of thing is morally corrupt, but others say it's just capitalism. Either way, it was protected by the law. This is the true story of Hunter Moore, the professional life ruiner who made it his mission to shame women online. Hunter Moore says he doesn't feel like the most hated man on the internet, although maybe he's just used to it now. He breathed new life into the world of revenge porn at the end of 2010 when he created his website, isanyoneup.com. Porn accounted for 37% of the internet back then, and revenge porn, or sharing explicit pictures to humiliate someone you were in a relationship with, really predates the internet. Even in the 80s, Hustler magazine had a section of readers submitted nudes that weren't always submitted by the subject of the photo herself, and that would sometimes get Hustler into hot water. But Hunter Moore was evidently inspired by the way that Hustler would include little tidbits about the woman, like her name and hobbies. Other revenge websites in the 2000s were showing nudes, but the difference with Is Anyone Up is that it listed the ex's full name, city, job, and social media profiles. You know, so you could really get to know the person behind the photo, or more likely shame them to their family, friends, and boss. It began when Hunter says he was sleeping with a woman who all of his friends thought was hot, and of course he wanted to share naked photos of her with them because that's what friendship is all about. Sharing is caring. He was having problems figuring out how to make them viewable to his friends when he remembered that he just had an unused website sitting around. So he shared the photos there, and his friend shared some photos back, and he saw that 14,000 people had visited the site after just one day or one week, depending on which source you're reading. The site hit the big time in early 2011 when Hunter posted photos of a member of the emo pop band All Time Low and started trending on Twitter. The bassist, Zach Merrick, said the photos were from a long distance relationship he had had and that it's an occupational hazard of being a touring musician because you're on the road so much. <sighs> the lonely lives of the rich and famous. Hunter Moore says the band photos got to be too easy because rock stars are handing those things out right and left. So he added a submission form to the website and immediately got 20 or 30 emails that seemed to be from the women in the photos themselves. I guess everyone wants their 15 minutes of fame. And then, you know, internet search results that will follow them for the rest of their lives. But of course, he also got a ton of submissions from people who never consented to having their photos shared. Not band members, but just regular people who trusted the wrong ex with their most intimate photos. There would be 15 to 30 posts a day on Is Anyone Up that usually showed a screenshot of the person's social media profile, then a picture of them clothed, then a picture of them not. Rolling Stone reports that some of the more famous victims included an American Idol finalist, the daughter of a major GOP donor, the co-founder of the sleep aid Dream Water, the bassist for the band Passion Pit, a real housewife, but then there were also just regular housewives and also school teachers and a lot of mothers. Hunter said that he verified that everyone posted was over the age of 18. And in an interview with the public radio station WNYC, Hunter said that he was protected by the Communications Decency Act of 1996, which keeps website owners from being liable for content submitted to them. Section 230 of the act basically stops legitimate websites from being sued for something like an offensive comment left by one of its readers, but it also meant that Hunter had a loophole. It wasn't his fault people kept sending him nudes to post, and the people who angrily wrote to him to take their photos down because they hadn't given him permission to post them, well, he had an answer for that too. The pictures they had taken were intended as gifts for someone else. The recipient of that photo was now the owner to submit to whatever smutty website they chose. And victims were unlikely to take their cases to court because a civil suit would cost tens of thousands of dollars and put even more focus on the photo the person was trying to escape. You know, maybe your Is Anyone Up page gets deleted, but your court case is forever. It's called the Barbara Streisand effect, the idea that trying to suppress information makes it that much more appealing. In 2003, the famous singer and actress sued a photographer who inadvertently took a picture of her mansion in California while documenting erosion on the coastline. The photo of Streisand's home had only been downloaded six times before the lawsuit, but was viewed 420,000 times in the month after. 
Not only was the case dismissed, but Streisand had to pay the other guy's legal fees. It was this idea that kept Hunter's victims from wanting to speak up. Hunter was so unapologetic about Is Anyone Up that when people created new social media profiles to try to escape the ones he had exposed, he would try to find and publish their new information. When asked why he decided to hurt people, Hunter said, I actually don't, they hurt themselves, and I'm just making a profit off of it. He felt like these very bad girls were just getting what they were asking for. But there was one woman who hurt him in August 2011. Hunter threw a party at his house where women were doing drugs off of his uh, nether regions, and he said this woman was fine with him posting the picture in the moment, but didn't feel super okay with it the next day when she was sober. She came to his house with her dad, but apparently daddy wasn't effective enough with the threats because she up and stabbed Hunter in his shoulder with a ballpoint pen. His visit to the hospital left a scar, but he was mostly just excited to post the photo to his website and get his highest traffic day ever. The web hits are what mattered most to Hunter. He said once that if someone killed themselves over being posted to his site, great. His actual quote was, do you know how much money I'd make? At the end of the day, I do not want anyone to hurt themselves, but if they do, thank you for the money. So where did this caricature of a movie villain come from? Well, Hunter Moore was born March 9, 1986 near Sacramento, California. He went to a private Christian school, but was kicked out in eighth grade. He described himself as shy, unheard, someone people blew off and didn't pay attention to. He later dropped out of the high school he was attending, but by that time, he considered himself an entrepreneur. He had a t-shirt line and had built a gaming forum by the age of 16, and he was into meeting people on sites like Makeout Club and LiveJournal. He went to cosmetology school and then, while working retail in a mall, won $250,000 in a harassment case that he's not allowed to discuss due to the settlement terms. He lived in New York City and then San Francisco, spent almost all of his settlement money doing nothing in Australia for a while, and then had to do Renaissance-themed hairstyling for a fetish website to pay the rent. This is when he had the idea for a website called Is Anyone Up, where he would write about travel and nightlife and all the wild stuff he got into. Basically, it seems to prove to all those middle school bullies that he wasn't a nobody. Then on that fateful day, he used that empty website, Is Anyone Up, to host his first nudes. He used the money he got to get a nose job. At the height of its popularity, Hunter says his website was getting hundreds of thousands of unique hits every day and making up to 30K a month, but the servers cost him a huge chunk of that. And don't forget the lawyer, PR person, server admin, and security people needed to verify ages. But then in October 2011, he messed with the wrong person. A 24-year-old found herself a victim of Hunter's website, and she happened to live at home with a mom who was a local news commentator, and wouldn't you know it, a former private investigator. The thing about the young woman's semi-topless photo was that she had never sent it to anyone. She had only taken it for herself and then saved it in her email. Three months later, in January 2012, her email was hacked, and that's when the photo hit Is Anyone Up? The woman's mom, Charlotte Laws, tried all of the usual pleading with Hunter and his publicist, his attorney, his hosting company, and his internet service provider. When nothing worked, she went to the FBI. Her daughter's friend had also been hacked before showing up on Is Anyone Up?, and the deeper she dove into the case with other victims of Hunter's, the more women she found who had been hacked. Many of them had been scammed by someone on Facebook named Gary Jones, who then hacked their email accounts. I know it sounds like the kind of thing a sleazy politician would say after sending an underage girl photos of his undercarriage, right? But no, they really were hacked. The hacker, this so-called Gary Jones, listed himself as 32 years old, from Belize, but living in Australia. He said he worked for a plus-size modeling agency, which is pretty cute since my understanding is that anyone remotely plus-size was ridiculed on Is Anyone Up with comments like, Jesus, someone call Greenpeace and get her back in the water. Gary appeared to be a lunky bro in a baseball cap, shirtless so you could admire his sweet tats, but apparently this appealed to the women he ended up scamming. The profile pics, of course, later turned out to belong to a gay p star named Matthew Rush, well known for such mega hits as Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Balls. And he had no idea who Gary Jones was. The FBI kicked in the door of Hunter's parents' home in Sacramento, where he was living in May 2012, to have a look around with their search warrant. 
A month before, Hunter had sold his domain to Bullyville, a website devoted to helping those who have been the subject of ridicule. The Is Anyone Up website directed there to a long, self-pitying letter from Hunter about how hard it was to run a life-ruining website and keep the dirty kitty pics at bay. But it's not like the FBI was going to say, oh, cool, as long as you're done ridiculing women's bodies, we'll leave you alone. In January 2014, 27-year-old Hunter Moore and his 25-year-old Facebook hacker friend, Gary Jones, actually named Charles Evans, were charged with multiple instances of conspiracy, unauthorized access to a protected computer, and aggravated identity theft. Basically, trying hard to get nudes of people against their will. Hunter admits that some of Is Anyone Up's photos were definitely from hacking, but says he never hacked anyone himself. And that the happiest he's ever been was the day he sold the website and could hopefully take a break from the death threats and having to change his phone number every month. Both Hunter and Charles pleaded guilty, and Hunter got two and a half years in federal prison, three years of supervised release, and a $2,000 fine. He also had to, and this is hilariously sad, pay a mere $145.70 in restitution to one of his victims. The last anyone heard from Hunter, he was out of prison and living in his parents' house again. So it may be a little disappointing that Hunter's punishment was a light slap on the wrist, but the good news is that the case brought the idea of revenge to the public eye and got legislators involved. As of 2020, 42 states and the District of Columbia have laws that prohibit distributing explicit video or photographs in an attempt to harass the victim. Some argue that the effect this crime has on a person is so much greater than a misdemeanor, and that the harm it causes goes well beyond just the state where the victim lives. So there's a push to create a federal law that would make it a felony. This would force internet companies to remove the offending photos because they aren't allowed to display any illegal content. Those who oppose the law say that it restricts free speech, but there's a pretty clear difference to me between matters of public concern and some guy who goes on Anderson Cooper and says he needs to get the information about what he calls sluts. When two of Hunter's victims confronted him on that show, he said, no one put a gun to your head and made you take those pictures. It's 2011, everything's on the internet. To me, it's like saying a woman who took the wrong way home from work was asking for it. Okay. I mean, but there's one easy way to never end up on my website is by taking those photos. Okay, but we have that personal choice to do that. Does, that doesn't mean that so, we should fear <laughs> that kind of thing happening to us. And yeah, sometimes people trust the wrong person and unfortunately they do hurtful things like that. They but just, that doesn't make it right. It feels like Hunter wouldn't have had such a problem if he hadn't pushed so hard. Another guy started a very short-lived website called Is Anybody Down in late 2011 and had the genius idea of offering to remove the offending photos if the person basically paid a ransom of a few hundred bucks. That's all you needed to do, Hunter. Give these people a chance to delete their shame and make some money in the process, Hunter. I'm not in any way condoning this sort of thing, you know, but I'm just saying that a lot of people would have paid the money to just be able to move on with their lives. One of the worst parts about this case for me was that when Charlotte Laws, the former private investigator, was able to get Hunter's security company to block her daughter's page from loading, Hunter just created a new page to shame the girl. It just shows you how, one, straight up mean he is, and two, how important it was for him to just win. When regular people or even big names like Facebook would send him cease and desist letters, he would respond to them with taunting photos of his um, flesh flute I really do think he was compensating for being an ignored junior high kid with a nose that he thought was ugly. As for whether he's the most hated man on the internet, Hunter says, I'm not sure if I'm the most hated. I heard the guys from Nickelback aren't liked very much on the internet either. Well, as long as you're doing better than Nickelback, things can't be all bad. When I started researching this story, Hunter was still out there on Twitter tweeting, is anyone up from time to time? But his profile has since been removed. I hope we'll learn more about where he is now on the Netflix documentary, The Most Hated Man on the Internet, premiering on July 27th. And in the meantime, I'd love to hear your thoughts about this case in the comments. Do you think it's just freedom of speech to be able to post revenge nudes on the internet? Has anything like this ever happened to you? Let me know. Thank you for tuning into my YouTube video. I'm just a true crime fan like you are, and I really appreciate you taking a chance on me. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you like spending this time together. I would be so appreciative. Until next time, I'm Katie, and this has been Katie Does Crime. 
piece that he's not allowed to dis to, 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 to discuss. A 24 <laughs> 24-year-old was ridiculous. Ridiculous. I didn't say that very well. And keep the dirty kitty pics at bay. Dang, gone at. He was living in his parents' house again, out of prison. And <laughs> I just read it backwards. Those who oppose the oppose the law. I messed it up.